Lord God, then. Amen. And the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are now in the third uh, topic, the third part of our theme, Unwavering Hope. We awake with unwavering hope. We awake with expectant hope. So again, the first part, hoping for the best in ourselves. And then the second, hoping for a renewed world, a re renewed lives. And we know what to do with that. Now the third, hoping for the best in God. Hoping for the best that is coming now from God. Hoping now God's surprises. I would like first to read to you um, the reading from prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lamb, young lion shall browse together, with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear and the bear shall be neighbors. Together the young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den. And the child lay his hand on the other's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. As water covers the sea, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You see, I like this reading to introduce us to God's surprises, hoping for God's surprises, hoping for God's best that is to come, because this is what already He is telling. The Spirit of the Lord will be upon Him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and knowledge, a spirit of fear of the Lord. What is Isaiah speaking about? This is the gifts of the Spirit, right? And this is the best coming from God that will be given to you and to me. When the salvation is done, salvation will give forth to us Holy Spirit. And then there will be harmony. There will be the cordiality in all things. There will be friendship. There will be joy and happiness because there is goodwill. Imagine the symbolisms, the ox and the lion eating together, wild beasts and domesticated animals will be together. The child will play at the cobra's den, symbolism. Whoever is lion in our midst is no longer lion, is a brother or sister in our midst. Whoever is proud will become humble. Whoever is selfish will become generous. Whoever thinks only of oneself will think of the other. This is God's best. Because when He comes into the world, He will restore everything according to His design. This is the beauty of what the Lord is, will, is going to bring to us. If there is hatred in people's lives, God who is love will bring love into people's lives. If there is no forgiveness, no compassion, no patience, God who is passionate, compassionate, who is forgiving, who is patient, will give it to us. That's God's best. Wherever there is ungodly, God will bring the godly. Wherever there is sin, God will bring forgiveness and grace. This is God's great, God's best and God surprises. And that is why as we look forward to this new liturgical year, this we are in Advent season and then all entire liturgical year, as we look into our human journey of life, 
God has in store for us blessings upon blessings that we have to discover as time, as days goes by. But we will not be able to discover them if we will, if we will forget that our life is now defined by our faith. We therefore walk with a journey in this entire year always with the mind set on God. God is giving me his best in Jesus Christ our Lord. God is giving me his best in his Holy Spirit that is given to me. And so, what is it to us, therefore now, to us, from us? Three things. First, at least three things. First, we have to be an encouraging, affirming person. God, in prophet Isaiah, he says that the Messiah will come. A bruised reed, he will not break. So even if a, a twig or a branch is already crooked, almost dying, he will not say, this is good for nothing. He will not break that. He will write, you rather, rather straighten it and help it. That is encouragement. That is affirming. A flickering flame, he will not put off. He will not, instead of blowing it off, enlighten it more. That is affirming. That is encouraging. This is God's best for us. Now, this is also a hint for all of us. Today, make an act of will to be resolved to become a person who is encouraging and not discouraging. To become a person who is affirming. To become a person who truly help build do not help to destroy. To become a person who truly lead rather than mislead. Become a person who truly build, who truly edify, who truly affirm and encourage. This is the one that will boost all the godly elements that are already in our midst. In the world we live in, we boost them we let them thrive and even prosper and because we are promoting that because we already dealt with the ungodly and destroy them in ourselves there are already good qualities in our ministry there are already good qualities we boost them by encouraging that by building on that by becoming an affirming person many times we like to critique Okay, it's good if it is going to be edifying. Because there are also criticisms that are edifying. But I would like to challenge you at least for this Advent season. Even if you think what you are saying is true, and yet it is criticism, maybe don't do that. Just keep your mouth shut. Maybe rephrase. Maybe rephrase the way you talk. Maybe say, you know, I will pray for you so that you will not do it again. That is much better. Rather than, oh, you know, you do this, you do that, you do this, that is bad. Well, make it one sentence. I will pray with you and for you that you may not do it again. That is encouraging. We have to be people who boost what is good, who who let, who promotes what is really good. And that is why let us be affirming people. Let us be encouraging people. Uh, in the ministry, as well as outside of our ministry, in the Filipino ministry, in our family, let us do that. In our circle of friends, let us do that. In the workplace, let us do that. This is to tell the world we live in that we are not defined by the bad elements. We are rather defined by the godly elements. We are not defined by what is sinful. We are rather defined by what is of grace. This is God's best. This is what we ought to do. Many times we say this is just good talk. Yes, it is good talk because you are not consequentially thinking 
And that is why that already I mentioned, be consequential. You are a good person. What are you going to do about it? You have good qualities. What are you going to do about it? You have capacities to truly be generous. What are you going to do about it? That is precisely why we should be encouraging, edifying, affirming godly people because God wants to use us by His presence in us to let His presence in our world be promoted. If we, are, we, if we tend with our eyes to always find what is faulty, what is mistake, maybe we turn our eyes to always see what is correct, what is good, because that, this kind of mindset is the one that boosts the goodness that is in us. The second one. Second, I would like us to to imbibe in ourselves seeing God's goodness seeing God's best that is coming hoping for God's best now all of these good qualities all of God's best are already in our hearts are already in our midst this is God's presence God is coming he is he has come we are waiting and yet he is already here that is why we wait to serve so we have to attune ourselves for God's presence. God's presence. We have to strive more to, at, to attune ourselves to God's presence. You know why we commit sin? We commit sin because we forget God's presence. You know why we many times do not want to correct even if we see that it is bad. What is bad is bad. We don't want to correct. It's okay because, you know, he's my friend. Or, you know, I am also like that. <laughs> it's because we forget God's presence in our lives. We have to attune and strive more to be attuned to God's presence. So how can we tune ourselves into God's presence? How? Let us, the classic way uh, to do that, let us, let us discuss this. At least three. Three classic ways how to nurture in ourselves and uh, build in ourselves a kind of eyes to always see and to be aware of God's presence. First and foremost, be reflective. Be reflective. Encourage silence. Encourage silence. Even when we are with people, do not let yourself be the one always talking. <laughs> Find time to also, and then listen. Let others also talk. Um, silence in, during the day. Maybe uh, driving. Maybe put first, especially during Advent season, put off the radio. In your closed vehicle, silence. Maybe enjoy that, love that. So that when you are with people, you know how to observe. You know when we are in, when we are in silence, we have heightened heightened awareness when we are in silence when you when you intentionally put yourself into silence you become aware not only of yourself but of every, everything now imagine imagine if we if we become like that every moment then we will know how to listen we will know how to listen to other people because god is speaking also in other people we know how to listen to god's presence in every situation because God might be telling to us something in every situation God is always present whether he is being served or being offended whether he's being loved or being hated and that is why important is to practice in ourselves tuning in to the Lord tuning in to the Lord and precisely one of concrete ways to tuning in is to find ourselves and to practice in ourselves daily moments of silence. Even if we have something good to tell. Sometimes if we are just the one giving and bringing, we miss to learn from others. We miss to learn from other people's stories. That is why 
God's presence is in each one, not only in oneself. And that's why from time to time, it is really good. Practice silence. Practice being able to be aware. That is tuning in to God's presence. The second one that will that will boost and will, that will encourage, nurture our awareness of the presence of God is think of other people. Think of first, first and foremost the saints. Think of people, saints, or of people who are alive. Think of people who have done good example, who have given good example to you, who have touched your life. And see, why is their life like that? Why are they like that? Why have I been touched by this person? Of course, you and I also give good encouragement to other people. But Father, I just want to think I'm the one good. All the rest are bad. <laughs> and we know that is also a bad element. So maybe we have to change that. Because precisely, if you, if we deny the presence of God in other people's lives, we also deny God's presence in ourselves. And that is why it is always, it is always an imperative, a rule, that we think of other people's goodness, not only of our own goodness. Because other people's goodness can build our goodness. If we think only of our goodness and not other people, our own goodness will die because it will not be fed. We do not feed our own goodness. Our own goodness, our own good qualities are fed by other people's goodness and the grace of God in our life. God's best can only be experienced by people who live the best of themselves. God's greatness can only be experienced in people who strive in greatness. That is why the reading, go back to the reading. The wolf shall be like a guest of the lamb. Isn't it the wolf eats lamb? Yeah. The leopard lie down with the kid. The kid can be moved by the leopard. The calf and young lion shall browse together. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors. The cow can be eaten by the bear. In all my holy mountain, there shall be no harm, no ruin, because all shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. The knowledge of the Lord. If we have faith, we have the knowledge of the Lord. If we have the love of God, we have the knowledge of the Lord. But precisely, it takes a will, an act of the will. An act of the will to see all of these good things happening. Your own quality and other people's qualities. These are the ones, when we make ourselves attuned to this, these are the ones that will make us attuned to the presence of God. And it is in this that we see God's best. It is in this way that we can truly experience God's surprises. Fine time examination of conscience. Remember I said, when we, when we come to see the bad elements and destroy them, it is part of coming to a retreat or coming to a prayer life, is to encounter the conscience. Con encounter the conscience. And so it cannot be overemphasized to truly practice examination of conscience daily. How? Father, I have been hearing that, but how? Will precisely find time first to quiet down, to be silent, and ask yourself, ask yourself sincere questions. What are the things I did bad today? What are the things I did good today? What are the things I said today? Those words help or those words hurt? What are the actions I did today? Were they edifying or were they actually destroying? In the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, he says, Let no evil talk come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building up 
as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. So, we examine our conscience. We examine how we act. We examine how we talk. We examine our, all our, our ways. It is in these three things, at least, that we attune ourselves more to the presence of God. And if we are attuned to the presence of God, then more and more we grow up to become the person God wants us to be. More and more we are living our Advent season the way this Advent season is to be lived the best it can be. We are living every season of our lives in this whole year the best every moment can be lived for love and honor of the Lord. And so the third is this. Expect God's generosity to be coming to you. If the past year, God's generosity has been given to us, either personally, individually, or to the ministry, I, I speak of the ministry, God has been generous. Because you, you in your own lives, you express God's generosity. And so, expect again God's generosity in your year, in our year's journey. Be assured of that. And that's why bring to God everything that you have in your life. Today, bring that. Talk to the Lord. Tomorrow, every day, talk to the Lord of the good things you want of this, of this new liturgical year. And then, as you experience and as you assure yourself and as you project yourself of God's generosity to you, make an act of the will to also be generous in as God as generous is to you. Remember in the prayer of virtuous living, God cannot be outdone in generosity. If we are generous to God, God will see to it. We are repaid, rewarded with His generosity hundredfold. We experience God's blessings we multiply it by becoming God's blessings to others. We want God's love. We experience this love and multiply this love by becoming love to others. We want God's forgiveness. We, we need to promote this God's forgiveness by being forgiving. And so on and so forth. This is who we are as Christians. And His presence now is a glimpse of his presence of the glory of heaven when we will be with him for eternity beholding the beatific vision and that is why we ask the intercession of the saints for these graces to live our life as holy as can be as righteous as can be as generous as can be as more Christian Christ like as can be we ask the Blessed Mother Mary, she is the Lady of Advent. We ask that we be enlightened, we be inspired, we be guided, that in every moment of our journey, we be like her, always having a heart, attuned to God's presence, attuned to what matters to God, attuned to what God expects us to, attuned to what is important to God. We pray and we see uh, our Saint Joseph, St. Joseph, you are guardian of the Lord Jesus Christ. Guard our soul from the attacks of the evil one. St. Joseph, you are the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Become my father as well so that I can live life virtuously like you, a virtuous man, a just man, a righteous man. You have devotions to saints. Call on them, especially during this Advent season. We only have a few days to go. And then we, we have our Simbangabi Triduum. Live the Simbangabi Triduum in the best way this year. Better than last year. Do not let this year say, okay, I have a lot of things to do. Okay? That is precisely now. This is now you heard what we have heard. This now are what you should become. Consequential, remember always that. That's the principle. If we, doubt, therefore, in this last topic, we expect God's best, 
and the God's best is already in you and in me. It's already happening in our midst, in the ministry. And let this be.